Hello everybody, it's Josie here. I'm going to be doing my wrap up today for the two readathons that I took part in at the end of October. So it was Witchathon and it was Spookathon. Um, and I kind of, they were running at the same time. I kind of wanted to do a bit of both. So I just just amalgamated um, the two and I read various books um, across the challenges. So I did also read uh, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I put in a different wrap up video and a two video wrap up video. So if you want to know about that one, go to that one, but just know that I loved it and I gave it like four and a half, maybe even on a reread it would be five stars, but I love that book. And um, also uh, Gideon the Ninth was one of the books, I think that was the group book for Witchathon. I've already read that, loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, again, I've done a whole review on that. Um, and Dark Dawn was the other one I was uh, listening to on audiobook at the time. And I'm going to do a Nevernight Chronicles review. So those are all going to be separate. But today I've got four books. And uh, <laughs> as luck would have it, it is two that are uh, vampire based um, and also with elements of queer and two that are witch based with queer. So queer witches, it's wonderful. Um, it worked out really well. And uh, in case you're wondering about the uh, look, I was attempting <laughs> to look a bit like Buffy. Uh, I don't know how my Sarah Michelle Gellar has turned out, but basically um, I've got this great t-shirt that I don't know if you can see, but it says, um, season, it's like greetings from Sunnydale, home of the Hellmouth, which I love. Um, and I thought I would kind of go a bit, kind of go a bit Buffy-ish today, just because we're talking about vampires and I love Buffy. Anyway, enough rambling. So <laughs> let me talk about the books that I read. So seeing as we're talking about vampires, I may as well start with these two. So the two kind of vampire themed books I read were The Deathless Girls uh, by Kieran Milkwood. Sorry, uh, Kieran Milkwood Hargrave. And how gorgeous is that cover? Uh, and then the other one was The Beautiful by Renee Idier. And this was also the group book for Spookathon as well. I think it was Spookathon, yeah. Um, and okay, so... <laughs> I, both of these books had some queer elements, this one a lot more, there is a queer female female romance in this one. This one actually, I wasn't sure, but one of the characters does basically say that she's kind of done with men in all aspects and she definitely prefers women uh, and she also, one of the first times you're introduced to her, she's kind of dressed in a masculine way, which I really like, um, which the times is set in, I think this is like 18 something, um, is 1872 in New Orleans, you know, dressing sort of as a woman in a masculine way wasn't really the dumb thing. So I love that. So those were kind of the, the queer elements in these books. So let me start with this one. So this was kind of, um, I picked this up because I love vampire fiction. And this was kind of built as sort of the revival of vampire fiction. And it's funny because I've seen a lot of reviews on this book um, and actually a lot of reviews that haven't been particularly positive. I've seen some positive ones, but not that many. And I kind of fall in the positive camp. I enjoyed myself. I, I don't know what people were necessarily expecting. I have heard quite a few people say that it doesn't have enough vampires, but I don't really get that because there are vampires in it. I'm, just, I'm slightly confused as to what that kind of means. Maybe they were looking for a slightly different type of vampire. Um, what I do love about this book is, so it's set in 1872 in New Orleans and the main character comes to New Orleans because she's kind of running from her past from Paris and you kind of find out throughout the book what it is that she's sort of quite unquote running from um, and she meets uh, this this quite mysterious woman um, and she kind of says to, she commissions her to make a dress for her and she, she invites her to um, this this kind of uh, restaurant hotel kind of salon place called uh, I think it's called the the, the den of lions um, and she meets all these characters and she meets a very mysterious stranger man there as well um, so there is a bit of romance in this um, and there's kind of an underlying mystery so uh, women are dying so people are dying um, and you kind of get these sort of dual perspectives so you get the perspective of I guess from the killer um, and then also, you know, her perspective. And I, I really enjoyed it. I kind of flew through it. It's quite a big book. And I read it really quickly. And I have to say, I, I gave it a solid four stars. I had, a, I had a great time reading it. I think it's, you know, it's kind of, it's teen vampire fiction. I loved the setting. And maybe that's kind of what seduced me a bit. Because anything set in New Orleans, I love. And it was very richly, I think Renee Adier's writing is very beautiful. It's very pretty. And she describes things very beautifully um and that probably just seduced me into it a bit more because I found it very atmospheric um I like the lead characters I, like I said I, I I was happy with the amount of vampires that are in it and you know 
if there's a second book, which I'm kind of assuming there might be, I'm going to read it because I liked it. And I liked, I'm trying to remember, I think it's Odette, yeah. So Celine is your main character, and Odette is the character who I really like, who is the kind of, I, I guess, lesbian identified uh, character in this book. And I'm, if there is a, a second book, I'd like to see a bit more of Odette as well, because I think she's a really interesting character. So yeah, four stars. I really liked it. Um, then the next one is this one over here. It's The Deathless Girls um, by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And okay, let's admire this lovely cover. Um, I was lucky enough to get a sort of a special edition signed copy. So before we undress the book, which I do like doing, how stunning is that book? And then look at the inside. Sorry, I'm a book, pretty book junkie. Um, and then uh, it's also signed. So this one's autographed. Um, and <laughs> so thing with this is, I this is actually a bit of a cover buy. And it kind of, when I read the synopsis on this, it said that it was a, a kind of a retelling of Dracula from the women in the story's perspective. And I, I, I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> Um, so, so I know that the author does reference uh, a Dracula in the back, and there is absolutely this. So you've got the Dracula character, the Dracul character. So this is more tied up with, um, I suppose, a Transylvanian and Eastern European myth of because you know the, the bloody count and the, the the kind of the story of, of Dracula or, or Dracul comes from that part of the world, um, and he was a, a sort of a ruler, and that very he used to put his victims or people he didn't like up on stakes and things like that so it comes from that um so I it, it's more it follows that mythology more um and what it also does and it's really beautiful is that it the, the main characters are these um two sisters that are gypsies and they are out in the woods one night and their 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 kind of camp gets attacked um and most most of the people in the camp are killed and just the younger women and, and men are sort of boys and girls are taken off to this kind of uh, this this castle and this isn't Dracul's castle it's a different castle um, of a kind of pretty much like a warlord tyrant ruler of um, this region and they're made to work in the kitchens and be slaves basically um, and then you, you come across this this kind of Dracul character um, and I don't want I think if if I don't talk about the story anymore it's going to give away the story but sort of the main elements are these two sisters and it's quite so I, like I said it, this wasn't what I was expecting but I really loved it so I loved again the, this beautiful rich descriptions um it's very actually quite hard to read in the beginning, particularly when their camp is being burnt, when they're being taken into slavery, and there's a lot of hints on in terms of sexual assault, um, in terms of uh, kind of these these two beautiful young girls being brought to these men, and there's you know what they're thinking. Um, so so if you're sensitive to that, that that is a trigger warning, um, and it's very kind of bleak in that sense that it's not it's not a story that's going to make you laugh, um, but it was very beautifully written. And unexpectedly, um, there is a beautiful romance in this between one of the sisters and another girl. Um, and they, it, it's, it's just beautifully written and it's lovely. And it's, it's, it took me by surprise and I really enjoyed it. So this is a book that I loved. I loved a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. I'll be totally honest. I would have probably always kept it because it's pretty, but I'm also now keeping it because I really loved it. Um, so this is a four and a half star read for me. I I would really recommend this. Um, if you can kind of take the slight, you know, like I said, trigger warnings and also the slight sort of bleakness and cruelty that people do to each other. Um, and there's definitely vampire elements in this, so you're not going to miss the vampires, but they only happen in the last sort of third of the book. Um, and the beginning is the story and these 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 girls and kind of also intertwined with gypsy culture and, and being hated for who you are, for being hated, for being a traveller and all of that. So I, I really recommend this. I'd say Four and a Half Stars is a great book. And then the other two. Um, so the other two are witch related. So we've got These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. And we've got uh, Fierce Like a Firestorm by Lana Popovich. Um, so this one, I'll start with Fierce Like a Firestorm. I can't, again, I don't want to say too much about the story because it is actually a sequel. So, um, Wicked Like a Wildfire is the, or Wildflower, is it Wildfire? Oh, Wicked Like a Wildfire <laughs> is the, uh, is the first one. And again, it's, it's kind of this, um, 
these two sisters uh, who, it reminds me a little bit of Practical Magic. Um, they grow up with their mom. They're told they're not supposed to use their magic. And then at the end of Wicked Like a Wildfire, they kind of encounter their clan and all these beautiful magical witches. Um, and there's also a storyline where you've got the god of the underworld um, and he takes one of the girls in sort of generations from this family as a bride. Um, and then this kind of picks up the story. Now, what I will say is I adored Wicked Like a Wildfire. I thought it was fantastic. Um, the, the queer element is that there was this, this beautiful romance between one of the sisters and her best friend and they, they've fallen in love and, and they're now together. Um, the second book, I kind of, in the beginning, I, I sort of have had time to reflect on it. It's beautifully written. So Lana Popovich writes very, very beautifully. Um, and the storyline does kind of continue, but if I'm 100% honest, I, I kind of think you could have probably tagged on 100 pages or maybe 200 pages onto the original book and it kind of just kept it there. I, I, I Frankly, I got a little bit bored in this one and I hate saying that because I really like the first one. Um, and just this kind of... Uh, th there are also elements in this where, you know, one of the sisters is being kept by this god of the underworld and it's very much a kind of a kidnap scenario which made me uncomfortable um i just i yeah i think I, I gave it three stars initially but i'm not even sure if i'd give it three stars now it really just wasn't my favorite book that i've read it was really disappointing compared to the the first book so so yeah and then i read the other witch book i read was this one this is um these witches don't burn by isabel sterling this is just queer Sabrina the Teenage Witch goodness. Um, it is very much a teen book and again I've heard a lot of people say that they were disappointed by this and I, I can kind of see why. It, I think it is very much pitched at a younger audience. I'm probably way too old um, to read this book. I had fun though. Um, so you've got uh, the main character. I'm trying to remember what her name is. Hannah. Um, you've got the main character, Hannah, who she is an elemental witch, so she can control um, the elements. So earth, fire, water, wind, um, or air. And she, uh, so, so, and her family are witches and they have a coven and it's set in Salem, Massachusetts, which I very much appreciate and I love. Um, and but they have to kind of keep their magic secret from the regs or the normals or the you know the, the other people um and it's really funny because she works in like a something in the cauldron it's like a, a witch shop and that um and the story starts out with that and she's having she's she's split up with her girlfriend um they've had problems her girlfriend is also a witch um and this is kind of a back and forth between uh, hannah and veronica who is her ex-girlfriend and then uh, you know they go to a party and she sees another girl um and <laughs> there is a real element of insta love i mean it's cute but it's oh my god how did that happen um you literally looked at each other and now you're in love um it's really sweet uh so so if you don't like insta love but i still kind of like the romance i thought it was quite sweet so there's wonderful queer romance in here um and there's a lot of, uh, so there's a lot of storyline, backstory line in terms of um, these blood witches and there's things happening. They, they stumble upon a ritual. They're not sure who's doing the ritual. Um, so, and then Hannah and her family stop getting attacked. Um, and, you know, you're trying to figure out who is attacking them, you know, what's going on, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a, a bit of a mystery, kind of a little bit of a thriller, uh, kind of teen romance, a bit sort of Sabrina the Teenage Witch-ish. And I thought it was really cute. I mean, again, I had a good time reading. I mean, I had, a, I had to say it, I had a lot better time reading this than I did this. Um, this, this kind of just made me smile and it was cute. Um, was it the best written book I've ever read? No. Uh, was it the best uh, romance I've ever read? No, it was total insta-love. Um, but did I actually just have fun? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but I kind of enjoyed it. It's got a sequel coming out, I think next year sometime that I might pick up. Um, I don't know yet, but it was just cute. I just, I, I just found it just, it, it just hooked me back to kind of those teen witch things and, and like, yeah, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So I liked it. So yeah, that, I mean like three and a half stars out of five. So that's me. Um, thank you all for listening. Let me know if you've read any of those, what you thought of them, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.